as the years go by, birthdays can be something of a disappointment. The same old gifts. The ever-present joker. But just occasionally, there's something that shows real promise. Like the keys to Honda's eagerly awaited S2000 sports car. And an invitation to the south of France to drive it through some of the most spectacular scenery in Europe. The S2000 is actually Honda's 50th birthday present to itself, designed as a showcase sports car to highlight their reputation for innovative race-bred technology. Rear-wheel drive with 240 horsepower and a six-speed gearbox, it's a truly mouth-watering prospect. It's on sale here in September, available in red, black or silver, with a price tag of around £28,000. On paper, you get an awful lot for your money, and there is already a long queue for the 500 cars a year earmarked for our shores. But will the buyers be getting what they hope for? First impressions, it has to be said, are a tad disappointing. I'm no styling guru, but the S2000 certainly lacks the love it or loathe it individuality of Porsche's Boxster or BMW Z3. But then, I guess that's what you tend to expect from the ever conservative Japanese stylists. There are some nice little details, with its shark-eyed nose striking a purposeful stance, but overall the shape just doesn't grab me. It is, however, very well put together and very practical. The hood, once you've mastered the catches, folds back in just 10 seconds at the touch of a button. And it's time to get going. Oh yes, I forgot, this Honda's got a nice little novelty, starter button. It's also got a Formula One style digital dashboard with a rather nice rising barcode rev counter and some rather iffy big numbers for your speedo. This Formula One experience is something Honda wanted out of this car as a celebration of its racing pedigree. And indeed the driver gets all the instruments under this neat binnacle while the passenger side gets, well, gets nothing. Even with the hood down and both windows dropped, there's very little buffeting inside the Honda with this high-sided door. It's a very comfortable driving position. Unless you open the radio cover and find its corner stabbing you in the knee. But then at least you have the option to use the dash-mounted switches neatly mirrored on the other side of the wheel by the heater controls. The S2000 is Honda's first true open sports car since the S800 ceased production back in 1971. The tiny 800cc engine was incredibly advanced with twin camshafts and a roller bearing crank which allowed it to rev to 8000. And the S2000 follows that high tech tradition. The all-new 16-valve twin-cam 2-litre engine is supposed to have more power per litre than any other normally aspirated production engine. But this only feels like it's got about 140. So where's all the power? Ah, there's the power. Because, of course, this 2-litre has got Honda's infamous VTEC variable valve timing, which makes it almost two engines in one. Below about 5,800 revs, you have indeed only got about 150 horsepower. But stir that gear lever and get those revs above six and it just sinks. The only trouble is, you use third gear VTEC for about two seconds and you're already doing more than 70 miles an hour. 
And that's the biggest disappointment with the S2000. With maximum torque at 7,500 RPM, there is nothing there at all when idling along at everyday speeds. So only an empty mountain road can provide real driving thrills. Only now can you fully appreciate the rigidity of this chassis. It takes all these bumps and undulations in its stride. <laughs> and indeed the steering feel, although light, really does give you the information you want. There's no scuttle shake, there's no rattle. And the only gears you need are first and second. The handling is well balanced and the traction excellent. With a limited slip differential, there's no need for traction control here. This is smile on your face motoring. So, am I pleased with my present? Well, I am, but then I'm not. If you can take the Honda S2000 somewhere where you can let it sing and dance, then it's a pretty impressive machine. But for everyday use, it just doesn't give me the sort of buzz that I need. In short, it's not quite the present I was hoping for.